Hey, what's up guys? So today what I want to do is run through a quick review of the new TBS Tango 2 from Team Black Sheep. And this is kind of their flagship radio, the second version of it. And I want to run through a few aspects of the radio after flying it with it for about a week or so. Um, so the first thing that you could probably tell is that this is a small, compact radio. Um, and it's kind of like a gaming style radio. If you play Xbox or a PlayStation, you know, console, it's very similar to that type of uh, size. So it's very compact. That's kind of what they were going for. Very travel friendly. Um, and you know, just just to compare it from uh, for size, here's kind of the um, Tyrannus, and this is the. TBS Tango next to it. The Tyrannus is, is about twice as big as the TBS Tango 2. And yeah, so they're going for a small, compact, travel friendly radio um, that you could lug around anywhere and yeah, just keep things very light in terms of travel. So that's kind of one aspect I really do like about it. Um, the other big thing with this radio is, is that everything from a crossfire perspective is built into this radio. There isn't any module bay. Um, so yeah, everything's baked in. I believe the power limit of this is uh, 250 milliwatt power output for the crossfire system. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, everything's baked in, which I do like because the only thing I run personally is crossfire. I know, you know, some people may, uh, feel a little bit differently about that because they fly, you know, 2.4 uh, bandwidth. So if it's not running Crossfire, Crossfire receiver, it's, pr it's not gonna work on this radio. So that's kind of one drawback with a fully integrated uh, Crossfire system radio that has no external bay like you would have with the Tyrannus or any other radio. So, that's kind of one one thing to kind of consider if you're looking to buying this controller. Um, the other thing that I want to talk a little bit about is the gimbals. And first off, they they feel really high quality. Um, the th I, I think that you know from a height perspective, I had a I had to increase my height of the gimbal just because I like the full size feel of the, my Tyrannus. So I I kind of you know, you could change the height by adjusting these stick ends, for instance. And that's kind of what I did to kind of match the the, the feel of my Tyrannus. I don't believe that they have the same throw um, as a full-size gimbal on my Tyrannus. And I also don't know if they could, um, if they'll be any tighter than this, because I kind of uh, maximize the tightness. So I might have to change the springs out a little bit. Um, and I don't think that'd be a hard thing to do because honestly in my Tyrannus, the regular springs that I had with him um, were a little too soft for me. So I switched out and got some like really strong springs um, and replaced those springs within my gimbals. And now like you, you could basically, it's a very stiff feel, but that's because I'm like super hard on my radio um, when I fly. So, yeah, that's kind of one thing I noticed is that, but that's all personal preference. Uh, some people like the looser feel. Um, some people like a moderate feel. Some people like a more stiffer feel. It all just p depends on what type of flying style you have. Um, and uh, yeah, kind of like how you hold the, 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 the controller as well. Um, so <clears throat> that's all personal preference. Now, the, the things that I love about this radio is the first one being is the antenna. Um, flip it up and you're good to go. That's one aspect I really do love. The other aspect I love is the USB-C charging. So basically this is a USB-C slot and all you have to do is grab a wire, plug it in, charge it up, and you're good to go. I think this thing charges in about, uh, full charge about two hours, but honestly it's been like, I charged it once and I have flown for about a week and it still has a, a, you know, a, a significant amount of power left and uh, yeah, it's holding up pretty well. So that, those are some of the aspects I like about the radio.
Who is this for? I guess that's probably the last thing that I need to talk about. Who is this for? And what I mean by that is, you know, there's two aspects of, of who the radio is for. There's the, the season pilot where they've been flying for a few years and they just need a new radio and uh, they run crossfire, etc. And then there's the new pilots that are coming into this hobby. So for me in particular, let's talk about the new pilots. This is the radio to get, in my opinion, if you're a new pilot and you do not have a radio, this is the one to get because you don't have to think about anything. It's crossfire. All you have to do is get the receivers, bind, you know, bind them to your quads, and you're good to go. That's, that's all you really have to do. Um, you don't have to think about getting a Tyrannus and worrying about the, uh, kind of the, the crossfire bay. You don't have to worry about you know, getting the right antenna for your crossfire system. Um, you don't have to worry about support. That's a big thing. Um, TBS, Team Black Sheep, is going to support this radio um, for the next few years at the very least and he, probably even longer than that and if, if you know anything about this hobby that goes a long way because some companies put stuff out there and don't support it um, for, from the perspective of firmware updates and such this is running OpenTX kind of their own version of OpenTX so they're going to support this and, and another aspect to include is it's going to be integrated they, they, they do a great job a very great job of future proofing current products with you know features that will be applied later on through firmware updates for instance so i have a feeling that this is going to be there's going to be some more integration with this controller in the future um because that's kind of what i would probably expect so <clears throat> anyways that's kind of my you know my opinion on if you're a new pilot now, if you're a seasoned pilot, if your pilots have been flying around for a few years now and you're looking for another radio and there's a couple of things to consider. So the first thing I will say is that if you're coming from a bigger radio, like a Tyrannus, it's going to take some time to get used to. And, you know, and honestly, it's going to take some time to tune your, retune your rates on your radio because the ergonomics of this feels completely different than the ergonomics of my Tyrannus. And with that being said, um, I had, had to spend a few days just retuning my quad. And this particular quad right here has a different rate setup than my traditional quad uh, that I have that's the exact same setup, but I use a Tyrannus. So that's something to consider is that if you're willing to, uh, if, if you have the ability to spend the time you probably will have to retune your quad um, if you're interested in this radio that's just my personal perspective on it that's kind of the experience i had using the radio um, the second bit is is that i i, I don't i don't think that these are full-size gimbals but they're pretty darn close and some people may get bothered by that um, I know I had to adjust the height a little bit to make it feel more like a full-size gimbal, um, similar to my Tyrannus, and yeah, and I and I, I do want to like switch out the springs and get stiffer springs so they feel a little bit more um, stiff, just because I, I'm used to that type of feel. All personal, personal preference, honestly. The other thing that seasoned pilots uh, may find, I don't know. A drawback is the screen um, it's a kind of it's kind of I think it's kind of like a black and white screen it's not like a color display screen as like other radios out there um, that are you know just recently appeared they have an LCD screen some of them do some of them don't um, but in particular this is kind of like a black and white screen it's it's kind of I don't know a moderate size because they, they had to make the screen uh, small enough where it would fit in this form factor right so that's one aspect of it that some people may not like and me personally i don't care like i the screen is to me the screen should do what it needs to do and you need to be done with it i would rather have a black and white screen that doesn't waste energy and i, I could use the radio for a solid week week and a half maybe even two weeks 
and I know that the battery is going to be there for me to use it and I don't have to deal with charging. So I personally, after I set the modes up, set the configurations up, I don't care about the screen as long as I could do that and I could do that with the screen. The LCD screen to me is just more of a gimmick than actual true functionality. Um, after you set after you set your quads up, set your you know set your modes up, set your configuration alerts, etc., you're not going to be using the screen. Let's just be honest. Um, you're going to be looking through your goggles. You're you're going to be looking at or you're going to be flying with the controller. You're not going to be looking at the screen. So the screen is a non-issue for me in particular. But some people may find that to be a lack um, of a feature. Not me personally though. So that's about it guys. Um, yeah, I, real, I like the radio. I need to spend some more time with it in the field to get an accurate uh, opinion on if I'm gonna keep using it um, or, if, or if it's just you know lacking in certain areas in terms of flight characteristics or ergonomics for me. But maybe in the coming weeks, I'll give you an update um, and kind of see, see where I'm at with the radio. Again, I think for beginners, this is a great radio to get, great, great radio, radio to consider because you don't have the history with other radios, right? You know, you're starting fresh and you don't know what another radio feels like. And this is the all-in-one radio that you could get and just be done with it. For someone that's a, you know, someone that's a seasoned pilot, it is something to entertain. It just depends on kind of what you're looking for, what um, what you want in a radio. If you're looking for a big LCD screen that eats up half your battery, I guess this isn't the radio for you. But if you're looking, if you're a pilot that is heavily uh, engaged in crossfire, the crossfire system, you like the uh, the support that TBS brings to the table. You like the ergonomics of this gaming style controller. Um, then this is something to consider. Uh, this radio is something to consider because it's all in one and that's kind of what I like about it is you don't have to think about it, you just grab it and go. As long as you're running cross firing quads, you should be fine. So that's about it guys. If you have any questions uh, about the product or anything else, just leave them below. I'll try to answer as many questions as possible and I'll give you an update in a f maybe a few months or so after I continue Flying with this, I just I, I don't want to give a you know a review on something that only flown for about a week. Um, just personal opinion on that side of things. So see you guys in the next one. Peace.